Hi and welcome to another Watch Geek video. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to set up and use this movement in this The Citizen Citizen. This tutorial is gonna cover both the movements A010 that's found in this watch and the A060 found in other The Citizen models. The only difference is that this one displays the power reserve right here on the dial while the other one has the power reserve hidden and to access it while the watch is running you simply push this pusher corrector and the seconds hand is gonna jump to one of three positions. It's either gonna jump to the one o'clock marker, two o'clock mar marker or three o'clock marker. Each one represents a single level of charge. A one o'clock marker is level one, so almost empty. The two o'clock marker is medium, so level two. And the three o'clock marker is gonna mean that the watch is pretty much full. If you're gonna do the setup and use, I advise you to first charge the watch. Also, if you're gonna be storing it for a very long period of time, do not store it in a dark place, but leave it at your ambient light in your living room. It's gonna be okay because putting these solar watches for long periods of time in the dark place will damage the battery. If you do this simpler procedure, they're gonna last you probably a lifetime. Now to set up this watch, all you have to do is unscrew the crown, wait for the seconds hand to hit 12 and then pull the crown to the second position. So you have closed first position and now once it hits 12, you're gonna pull it all the way out like so. Now with the crown pulled out, you wanna set the minutes, nothing else. So move the minutes to the desired position and Citizen advises you to pass the minute that you wanna set up and then go back to it. So let's say we wanna set it up to 25. Pass, go past the 25 and then return there and simply align it with 25. Wait for the atomic clock or whatever you're syncing this watch with to hit 25 minutes at the mark and then simply close the crown. There. Once you've done that, you can go and set up the date and the hours because this watch has an independently settable hour hand, so you don't have to set up the hours right now. Okay, so to access the calendar information, you pull the crown to the first position. And this is something you will also be using when you change time zones or when you wanna change the DST setting from winter time to summertime and vice versa. Because as you can see, pulling the crown to the first position doesn't affect the minutes and the seconds. It only affects the hours. So if you're changing the time zone and you have the watch set up, you simply move to the desired time zone or you can move backwards. Also with the DST changes, you can go the hour, one hour plus, one hour minus. So that's pretty much simple. So this is also how you're gonna, like I said, use it if you change your time zones. But let's go back to the initial setup. You have to set up the date. The date is synced with the hour hand. So if you want the 26th, you're gonna have to make two revolutions and you're also going to use that to see if you're setting up AM or PM. So if we jump here, we can see this was PM. Now we're at 26th of AM. If you want, if you want the 27th, you're simply gonna make another revolution. So this is 26th AM. This is 26th PM. We want to set it up to let's say 27th at 11 uh, AM. So let's move. We're at 27th, and let's just jump to 11, like so. There, now you've set up the date, the hours, the minutes, and the seconds. Now what you wanna set up is the perpetual calendar because this watch, once you set it up initially, will always know what the correct date is, regardless of being a leap year or not. To do so, you have to tell the watch not only what month it is, but also what year it is. And this is where the genius of citizen movements come. Because usually when watches need information like month and a leap year, they're gonna have an additional subdial. What But Citizen came up with a brilliant solution of each hour marker representing the month of a year. So one is January, two is February, three is March, and so on all the way to 12. And also the leap year information is done the same way. So if you set up the seconds hand, I'm gonna show you in a second how, to let's say January of a leap year. So let's say year 2020 or 2024, you're just gonna put it up to the one o'clock marker. If you wanna set it up to January of 2021 or 2020 or 2025, you're gonna set it up to the one o'clock marker plus one marker because this is gonna be plus one, leap year plus one. If you wanna set it up to January of 2022, you're gonna go by two markers 
after the one o'clock marker. So let's show you in real life how it looks. To access the perpetual calendar information while the crown is in the first position, so pulled out to the first position, you press and hold this pusher corrector and I advise you to use a toothpick because it's made of wood and it's not gonna scratch the case. So push in and hold for two seconds and the seconds hand is gonna jump to show you the information of the perpetual calendar. So currently this watch is set up to the December of leap year plus one, which is 2021. So let's say we wanna set it up to February of 2020 or 2024, that's gonna be a leap year. So you're just gonna keep pushing this until the seconds hand goes to the February. So each push pushes it by one, like so. This is now January of leap year, leap year plus one, leap year plus two, leap year plus three, and February of a leap year, so 2020 or 2024. Let's say we want March of 2022. That's gonna be the three o'clock marker plus two years after leap year. So just keep pressing it until you get to the March and then plus two years. So March of 2021, March of 2022. I hope you understand that. Let's try, I don't know, April of 2023. That's going to be the four o'clock marker and then plus three markers. So push April 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. So the hour marker represents a leap year and all these hashes represent years after leap year. And that's pretty much it. Once you've set it up to the desired, let's say, month of, of, of a leap year, in this case, May of leap year, you've set up the perpetual calendar. All you have to do is close the crown and the watch is going to resume its operation of the time. And now you've set up the calendar correctly. So now the watch knows what year it is, what month it is, what date it is, hours, minutes and seconds and pretty much you don't have to touch it anymore. The only things that you're gonna change are the DST changes that I showed you like on the first click and then use it to move the hour hand or when you change the time zone. The timekeeping and the calendar data is gonna be stored for pretty much the entire lifetime of the watch. And that's pretty much it. So close the crown and that's it, you've set up the watch. Now this watch does offer two additional functions which are something that you probably will never use. The first one is the checking of the reference position of hands. To do so in the closed position, so not the first click, but in the closed position, you press and hold this pusher corrector for about five seconds and all the hands are gonna jump to 12 and the date disc is gonna move to one. Now this watch does have an auto correction system. So you probably will never have to do that because the watch corrects the hands automatically. If for some reason they are misaligned and they do not correct themselves, you're gonna have to send it to the service center. And the final option that this watch has in a, is an all reset procedure where the watch deletes all the data that it has stored. To do so, you pull the crown to the second click again when the second hand reaches 12. So you pull it out to the second click and you hold this pusher corrector for about 10 seconds. That's gonna do an all reset procedure on the watch. However, Citizen advises that you do not do that unless absolutely necessary. I don't know what, what they mean by absolutely necessary, but I see it as something to simply not do. So I will not be doing it on this watch. I just wanted to show you that there is an option and how to do it. Anyways, that's it, so I hope you found this useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.